where it began. It began for me in Monrovia, Liberia, where I was born. And when I was living there, it was the poorest country in the world at the time, and there was a civil war going on. So for me, growing up in Liberia, it was completely different than what my life is right now. So living in Liberia as a kid, you don't go to school, you're literally trying to survive, you're trying to get by in life, you're trying to, you know, find food or, you know, be with your family. So growing up in Liberia, I was living with my sisters. So I never really lived with my mother and father. I lived with my sisters. And we had to, we had to technically move around every time because when the war was going on, there was rebels coming and, you know, charging into your homes and taking whatever they wanted. So in order to survive, you had to move. So I spent my childhood moving nearly every, every second day or every, every day. So that was when my childhood began. That's, where, that's the only thing I remember about my childhood. Okay, so from there, my uncle decided to come to Liberia and to give me a second chance in life. He decided to adopt me and bring me to Ireland here to live, you know, a normal, a normal life. All right, so I remember him coming over to Ireland. He came to me and he was like, boy, do I want to bring you to live in Ireland. And I was like, where, where the hell is Ireland? Like, and uh, he was like, it's in Europe. And so I remember talking to one of my friends, and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to America. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait to go to America. So I remember telling all my friends, everyone, that I was going to America. I'm going to go live in America. And then he was like, no, where? He was like, no, you're not going to America. You're going to Europe. But as a kid in Liberia, there's only two places you know growing up, which is Africa and America. Even though we support all the Premier League teams, we, all, we, all we think is they're all in America. So I remember him bringing me, telling me we're going. He got me new runners, new shoes, new clothes. The first time I ever had anything new on me. And he decided to, he bought me a passport, he brought me everything, and he put me on an airplane for the very first time. And the fond memory I have was him giving me a jacket and saying, you're going to need this jacket going to Ireland. And I was like, why, why would I need a jacket? It's 30 plus degrees outside. He's like, you're going to need this jacket. So in the airplane, I remember walking out into the airplane and hitting the fresh Irish cold. It's absolutely freezing. And, uh, you know, my lips all chapped. I was nearly crying with the cold. But that was my first experience in life. It was a completely different life. And then being brought here to Ireland, and I landed. When I landed in Ireland, I started school in first class. So he put me in first class. And sure, I had to learn everything new. I had to learn proper English. I had to learn how to get on with, I had, to, I had to learn to appreciate different people. I've never seen a white person before. I've never seen white teachers. I've never even been to school. So I had to experience everything very new. So anyway, I remember starting the first class and he, and uh, the teacher, I remember sitting in class and the teacher was like, it was snowing, it was like February, I think. It was February, I don't know, it was on my birth, February 18th, and it was snowing outside. And I remember just sitting in class, looking out the window, just looking at the snow, just like, what is that thing falling from the sky? I'd never seen it before in my life. It's like, what is that falling from the sky? And the teacher was like, snow, have you never seen snow before? And I was like, who in Africa has seen snow before? <laughs> and he brought me, he brought me out, she brought me out, and I remember putting my hand out, and you know when the snow hits your hand, it disappears. So that was the funnest memory I've ever had in primary school. And obviously it wasn't all happy and gloomy in primary school. You know, it took time for people to accept me being in the school, being the only black kid in the school, being probably the very first black kid that was in the school. You know, I was in a big rural school. It was a, it was a rural area, but it was a big school and I was the only black kid in the school. So people had to take getting used to, you know, seeing me or talking to me or getting to know me. And I found that kind of strange, you know, that it took them to accept me in the school, even though I was just a different color. And I remember, well, obviously as a kid, you have arguments with other kids. So we're playing soccer or something. I had a fight with one of the other kids. And 
I don't know, I kicked him or something, and he was angry, and he just said to me, he was like, why don't you F off and go back to where you came from? And I was only about nine or 10 at the time, and that hit me deep in the chest, because you know, I never experienced anything like that before. It was something that I've never heard anyone say to me, and I was kind of like, am I not accepted in the school? Am I not wanted here? Or what's going on? So I didn't know what to do with myself, and that's where I found the love for GAA, that's where Gaelic kind of came into place for me. And, you know, Gaelic kind of, you know, in a little neighborhood like that, if you play GAA, people tend to accept you a little bit easier, especially in the countryside, they accept you. So I began playing GAA, um, ended up loving the sport, ended up doing pretty good with it, and people tend to accept you, people tend to bring you into the crowd and you make good friends and, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of substitute GAA in order not to get abuse from all the other kids. I kind of got them to accept me a little bit more, which is probably not the right thing to do, but it was the way I kind of went around it. So that was the second stage of my life, primary school, trying to get people to accept me, trying to you know, impress other people. And the next stage of my life is now where I tend to realize that it's not all about you know, being on a GAA team or being on other team for people to accept you. People have to accept you as a person or who you are or even how you go around your normal day as yourself. So right now, right now in my life, everything's kind of different. You know, I am playing for Westmead. I am, you know, doing seminars like this. And it's something, it's very new. It's very new to me and it's weird having you know, different kids coming up to you and appreciating you and taking and trying to get advice off you. So if I was to give one advice to someone who, you know, is struggling in school, struggling to be appreciated, struggling to, you know, get appreciation from other people or people aren't, you know, giving them abuse, people are giving them abuse, what I would say to them is, you know, try drive on, try, you know, impress yourself. Don't try to impress them. Try make yourself, make a person out of yourself. Don't just go by what other people think. So I remember a little kid email, uh, messaged me on Instagram and he was like, oh, there is these kids kind of bullying me or whatever and the only way I can act up is by fighting with them or by arguing with them or, you know, or, you know defending myself by calling them names as well and I was like, why do you have to stoop on their level in order for them to respect you? And he was like, that's just the way it has to be. And I was like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, try and drive yourself on. Try not to mind them. Try to brush them away from what they're trying to say to you. So live your own life. So that's the only advice I'll try to give to people who are struggling with that at the moment. And it's an honor speaking here. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone for listening. Thanks, man.